Now, the first of two stories about the nation's schools. Students return to Atlanta classrooms for the start of a new school year today, but students and teachers will be laboring under the cloud of a major cheating scandal that's raising big questions in Atlanta and in districts across the country. Special correspondent John Talenko of Learning Matters Television has our report. Parks Middle School in Atlanta, Georgia was a beacon of hope. Located in one of the poorest neighborhoods in the city, it had built a reputation as a high-achieving school. Chandra Galishaw felt lucky to send her children to Parks. This was a college prep middle school. I seen the change going on over there, and I was really impressed with that. That's what made me want my daughter to go there more so than ever. Parks had made some of the largest gains anywhere in Georgia. Pass rates on the state tests climbed from 35% to 78% in reading and from 24% to 86% in math. Then, this summer, came shocking news. The report's findings are troubling. We determined that 178 teachers and principals in the Atlanta public school system cheated. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation released an 800-page report detailing district-wide cheating on the state test going back to at least 2006. In some schools, teachers would point or use voice inflection to guide students to the right answers. But at Parks Middle School, they took cheating to a whole other level. Before the state exam, investigators wrote, Parks principal Christopher Waller would give teacher Damney Lewis the key to the room where the tests were kept. Then the teacher, quote, used a razor blade to open the plastic wrapping around the test booklets, copied the test for each grade, and resealed the wrapping using a lighter to melt the plastic. And after students had finished testing, Principal Waller told teachers it was, quote, time to go, meaning go to the room where the tests were kept and change the answers. In all, 12 teachers and the principal at Parks were implicated. Seven confessed to cheating. Chandra's daughter's teacher was among them. I was really mad. See, these children take a test before they get in those schools. You know what it's called? It's called the streets out there. It's called the drug dealers they have to walk past, the prostitution they have to walk past, the gangs they have to walk past. They take a test before they even get in them doors. And what are we doing when we're inside with all this stuff that's going on? We're taking them kids right back to where they don't came from. Somebody didn't give a crap about my child. The state investigation uncovered cheating in 44 schools, almost half the district's total. Recent reports of cheating have come up elsewhere, too, in Los Angeles, Houston, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. But the case in Atlanta is by far the largest, and it's left many people wondering why it happened and how it can be prevented from happening again. It's tempting to blame principals and teachers what they did, because what they did is clearly wrong. It's unethical. In many cases, it's un illegal. Robert Schaefer tracks cheating for fair test, a national group opposed to the high stakes fill in the bubble tests used by most states. But you need to understand the context in which these actions took place. The pressure to boost scores by any means necessary is so great that teachers think they have to get those scores up by hook or by crook. In Atlanta, according to the state's investigation, pressure came from the top. Superintendent Beverly Hall, who led the district for 12 years and was 2009 National Superintendent of the Year, set targets for test score improvements at every school and told principals that if they failed to meet them, she'd find someone who will. Principals passed the message along. How were teachers treated in Atlanta's public schools? Teachers get abused. In these difficult, challenged schools, you have administrators who are telling teachers, do it or else. Graham Balch taught in Atlanta for four years and knew about the pressure to meet test score targets. Yes, in these lower income neighborhoods, a student might need to make 50 points of gains to reach the same uh, absolute score that a student in a high income neighborhood might only need to make two points to reach that, uh, that goal. And 50 points is a lot of gains, perhaps unrealistic to make in one year. 
in that kind of situation, some people crack more and more apparently each year. There is very clearly much more reported cheating now than at any time in the past. Schaefer says the increase began nearly a decade ago with the federal education law known as No Child Left Behind. It required states to set annual targets for pass rates on state tests and gave them until 2014 to bring all students up to grade level or face sanctions. It was said when No Child Left Behind first became law that we'd see teaching to the test and manipulating scores. That's exactly what had happened. I think there's not uh, reason to think that this is a broad national uh, phenomena, which is one of the reasons I wouldn't necessarily put it at the doorstep of, uh, of No Child Left Behind. To Michael Casserly of the Council of Great City Schools, Atlanta is an isolated case. In support of that, Georgia investigators found no evidence of cheating in 80% of all schools statewide. But when cheating happens, he says, the solution is clear. It's unacceptable. It needs to be stopped. People need to be uh, punished. Um, and um, where there are uh, hangings, they need to be uh, public and high. With children expected to pass state tests by 2014, the pressure is mounting. So far, 38% of schools nationwide have failed to meet test score targets set by No Child Left Behind. U.S. Secretary of Education Arne Duncan testified recently that 82% may fail in the year ahead. However, schools may get a reprieve. The law is up for reauthorization, and targets and deadlines could change. Back in Atlanta, school officials are repairing the damage. Superintendent Beverly Hall, who's denied any role in cheating, resigned in June. Her replacement, Errol Davis, promises swift action. We will find those students who were cheated. Uh, we will do assessments. We will look at students who are not where they're supposed to be, and we will provide avenues of remediation. And he says he'll go after those who cheated, too. I do not believe that anyone who's implicated should appear in front of our children. This Some teachers will first. lose their licenses. Report Others may face criminal charges. 12, Former um, Superintendent Hall, who and, received uh, some $600,000 in bonuses, has been asked to return the portion of that tied to fraudulent test scores. As for schools, from now on, any unusual gains will trigger automatic investigations. But what about the high expectations and tough consequences for failing to meet them that are said to have led to the cheating in the first place? I'm certainly going to review the targets and target setting process, but I don't think that uh, we should abandon uh, high expectations. I don't think we should abandon putting pressure on people to meet high expectations. What we have to do, however, is make sure that they, they have the capability and the training and the resources to meet those expectations. What we have not done as a nation or as a school system is think what does it look like to help a student who's starting at a lower level make the big gains year after year to get to this high goal. Graham Balch also believes pressure alone is not enough. Let's think about how to support teachers rather than control teachers. Let's think about what does the class size look like? What do the lab supplies look like? All we've changed is what we expect. But what we've not done is change the way we do education. There's a real opportunity for change, both in Atlanta and in the reauthorization of No Child Left Behind. The question is, what will the changes be?